Radio Católica. Radio Católica. Unidos por Cristo y María. Unidos por Cristo y María. Alégrese por fin los coros de los ángeles. Exulten las jerarquías del cielo y por la victoria del rey tan poderoso que las trompetas anuncien la salvación. Goce también la tierra inundada de tanta claridad y que radiante con el fulgor del Rey Eterno se sienta libre de la tiniebla que cubría el orbe entero. Alégrese también nuestra Madre, la Iglesia, revestida de luz tan brillante, resuene este templo con las aclamaciones del pueblo. Levantemos el corazón, lo tenemos levantado hacia el Señor. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios, es justo y necesario. En verdad es justo y necesario aclamar con nuestras voces y con todo el afecto del corazón a Dios invisible. El Padre Todopoderoso y a su único Hijo, nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Porque Él ha pagado por nosotros al Eterno Padre la deuda de Adán y ha borrado con su sangre inmaculada la condena del antiguo pecado. Porque estas son las fiestas de Pascua en las que se inmola el verdadero pecado, cuya sangre consagra las puertas de los fieles. Esta es la noche en que sacaste de Egipto a los israelitas nuestros padres y los hiciste pasar a pie el mar rojo. Esta es la noche en que la columna de fuego esclareció las tinieblas del pecado. Esta es la noche que a todos los que creen en Cristo por toda la tierra los arranca de los vicios del mundo de la oscuridad del pecado lo restituye a la gracia y los agrega a los santos. Esta es la noche en que rota las cadenas de la muerte, Cristo asciende victorioso del abismo. ¿De qué nos serviría haber nacido si no hubiéramos sido rescatados? 
Qué asombroso beneficio de tu amor por nosotros. Qué incomparable ternura y caridad para rescatar al esclavo entregaste al Hijo. Necesario fue el pecado de Adán que ha sido borrado por la muerte de Cristo. Feliz la culpa que mereció tal Redentor. Qué noche tan dichosa, solo ella conoció el momento en que Cristo resucitó del abismo. Esta es la noche de la que estaba escrito, será la noche clara como el día, la noche iluminada por mi gozo. Así, esta noche santa ahuyenta los pecados, Lava las culpas, devuelve la inocencia a los caídos, la alegría a los tristes, expulsa el odio, trae la concordia, doblega a los potentes. Este esta noche de gracia acepta, Padre Santo, el sacrificio vespertino de esta llama que la Santa Iglesia te ofrece en la solemne ofrenda de este sirio, obra de las abejas. Sabemos ya lo que anuncia esta columna de fuego que arde en llama viva para gloria de Dios. Aunque distribuye su luz, no me voy a repartirla porque se alimenta de serafina que elaboró la oveja fecunda para hacer, hacer esta lámpara preciosa. Qué noche tan dichosa en que se une el cielo con la tierra, lo humano con lo divino. Te rogamos, Señor, que este sirio consagrado a tu nombre para destruir la oscuridad de esta noche arda sin apagarse y aceptándolo como perfume se asocia a las lumbreras del cielo que el lucero matinal lo encuentre ardiendo, ese lucero que no conoce ocaso, Jesucristo tu Hijo, que volviendo del abismo, brilla sereno para el linaje humano, y vive y reina por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Ah, por favor, apagar todas sus velas y en este momento va a pasar los sugieres a recogerlas 
please turn off your candles, and at this time, the ushers will walk by uh, to pick up the candles. Thank you. Hermanos, con el pregón solemne de la Pascua, hemos entrado ya en la noche santa de la resurrección del Señor. Escuchemos cómo en la antigua alianza Dios salvó a su pueblo y en la plenitud de los tiempos envió al mundo a su Hijo para que nos redimiera. Oremos para que Dios nuestro Padre conduzca a su plenitud esta obra de salvación iniciada con la muerte y resurrección de Jesucristo. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people and in these la the last days has sent us his son as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated, por favor sentarnos. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the dark darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed, the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters, to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seeds, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seeds in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shade light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night 
and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was, and God blessed them, saying, be fertile, multiply, and fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make men in our own image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl under the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food. To all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished, with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Espíritu Señor y renueva la faz de la tierra. Envía tu Espíritu Señor y renueva la faz de la tierra. Bendice alma mía al Señor, Dios mío, qué grande eres. Te vistes de belleza y majestad, la luz te envuelve como un manto. Envía tu Espíritu, Señor, y renueva la faz de la tierra. 
Asentaste la tierra sobre sus cimientos y no vacilará jamás. La cubriste con el manto del océano. Se las montañas. Hace para los dos, para los que el hombre Please stand. Almighty, ever-living God, wonderful in all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sanctified, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be, please be seated. del libro del Génesis. En aquel tiempo, Dios le puso una prueba a Abraham y le dijo, Abraham, Abraham. Él respondió. Y Dios dijo, toma tu único hijo, Isaac, a quien tanto amas. Vete a la región de Moría y ofrécemelo en sacrificio en el monte que yo te indicaré. Abraham aparejó su y a su hijo Isaac, cortó leña para el sacrificio y caminó a la tercer día, divisó a lo lejos el lugar. Les dijo entonces a sus criados, quédense aquí con el burro, yo iré con el muchacho hasta allá para adorar a Dios y después Él respondió, ¿qué quiere? El muchacho con ya tenemos, pero ¿dónde está el cordero? Contestó, estará el cordero, hijo mío. Siguieron caminando. 
fueron al sitio que había señalado, levantó un altar y acomodó la leña. Luego ató a su hijo Isaac, lo puso sobre el altar encima de la leña y tomó el cuchillo para degollarlo. Pero el ángel del Señor lo llamó desde el cielo y le dijo, Abraham, Abraham, él contestó, aquí estoy. El ángel le dijo, no descargues la mano contra tu hijo ni le hagas daño. Ya veo que temes a Dios porque no le has negado a tu hijo único. Abraham levantó los ojos y vio un carnero enredado por los cuernos en la maleza. Atrapó el carnero y lo ofreció en sacrificio en lugar de su hijo. Abraham puso por nombre aquel sitio, el Señor provee. Por lo que aún el día de hoy se dice, el monte donde el Señor provee. El ángel del Señor volvió a llamar a Abraham desde el cielo y le dijo, Juro por mí mismo, dice el Señor, que por, que por haber hecho esto y no haberme negado a tu Hijo único, yo te bendeciré y multiplicaré tu descendencia como las arenas del cielo y las arenas del mar. Tus descendientes conquistarán las ciudades enemigas. En tu descendencia serán bendecidos todos los pueblos de la tierra, porque obedeciste mis palabras. Palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Dios Padre de los creyentes, 
que por medio del sacramento pascual del bautismo sigues cumpliendo la promesa hecha a Abraham de multiplicar sus descendencias por toda la tierra y de hacerlo el padre de todas las naciones. Concede a tu pueblo responder dignamente a la gracia de tu llamado. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. Why are you crying out to me? Eyes to go When I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers, God, who Israelites now moved behind them, a column of leaving the took up its place in between the nations. Israel, but the ark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptians, forced a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their that they could hardly move. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on towards the sea when the Lord hurled them into the midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of 
saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore and the power that they had against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord in him and in his three Moses and the Egyptians sang the song For he is glorious, horsing into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. al Señor sublime su victoria cantemos al Señor sublime su victoria cantemos al Señor sublime su victoria caballo y jinete arrojado en el mar mi fuerza y mi poder es el Señor Él fue mi salvación Él es mi Dios, yo lo alabaré. El Dios de mis padres, yo lo ensalzaré. Cantemos al Señor, sublime su victoria. El Señor es un guerrero, su nombre. Faraón los lanzó al mar, ahogó en el mar rojo a sus mejores capitanes. Cantemos al Señor, sublime su victoria. Las olas los cubrieron, bajaron hasta el fondo como piedras. Tu diestra, Señor, Es fuerte y terrible, tu diestra, Señor, tritura al enemigo. Cantemos al Señor, sublime su vida. Los introdujantas, tu heredad, lugar del que hiciste tu trono, Señor. Santuario, Señor, que fundaron tus manos, el Señor reina por siempre jamás. Cantemos al Señor, sublime gloria. Ancient one, and in splendor, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. El que te creó te tomará por esposa. Su nombre es Señor de los Ejércitos. 
Tu Redentor es el Santo de Israel, será llamado Dios de toda la tierra. Como a una mujer abandonada y abatida, te vuelve a llamar el Señor. ¿Acaso repudia uno a la esposa de la juventud, dice tu Dios? Por un instante te abandoné, pero con inmensa misericordia te volveré a tomar. En un arrebato de ira, te oculté un instante mi rostro, pero con amor eterno me he apiadado de ti, dice el Señor, tu Redentor. Me pasa ahora como en los días de entonces las aguas del diluvio van a cubrir la Ahora arme ya contra volver a menos podrán desaparecer y hundirse las colinas por ti no desaparecerá y mi alianza quedará firme por la tempestad, la no consolada. He aquí que yo mismo coloco tus piedras sobre piedras finas, tus cimientos sobre zafiros. Te pondré almenas de rubí y puertas de esmeralda y murallas de piedras preciosas. Todos tus hijos serán discípulos del Señor. Y será grande tu prosperidad. Serás con su justicia. Destierra ya nada. over me. O oh Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down to and to the pit. I will praise you, Lord. to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with a down rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, O have pity on me, O Lord, be my morning sing, Lord. 
forever will I praise you, Lord. you just you. Siempre el número de multiplicar prometido parte para que tu tu voluntad a todos los hombres como los patriarcas lo creyeron y esperaron por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Hold you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who are have no money, come and receive grain and eat. Came without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy heed me, so eat well. You should reach fair Come to me, listen, that you may have. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant that benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the people, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, a nation that knew you now shall run to you because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who is glor glorify you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he's near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. As I, as the heaven, as high as the heaven above the earth, high are your ways, and my thoughts are your thoughts. From the heavens, the rain and the snow came down, and do not return there till they have weathered the earth, make it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word that goes from my return. To my way, giving the end which I speak to God.
Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de la salvación. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de la salvación. Vean cómo es Él, el Dios que me salva. Me siento seguro y no tengo más miedo. Pues es el Señor, mi fuerza y mi canción. Él es mi salvación. Y ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de los manantiales de la salvación. Ustedes sacarán agua con alegría de las vertientes de la salvación. Denle las gracias al Señor de la salvación canten al Señor porque ha hecho maravillas que toda la tierra debe conocer griten de contentos habitantes de Sion porque grande se ha portado con Santo de Israel, a alegría de la salvación. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Lectura del libro del profeta Baruch. Escucha. Mandar. la sabiduría seguido eternamente aprende prudencia si hay la donde se encuentra 
servir la paz la paz yo en lugar y tú que todo la conoce con su inteligencia y la ha escudriñado el que cimentó la tierra para todos los tiempos y la pobló de animales cuadrúpedos el que envía la luz y allá va la llama y tembloroso temblorosa la obedece llama a los astros que brillan jubilosos en sus puestos de guardia y ellos le responden aquí estamos y refulgen gozosos para aquel que los hizo Él es nuestro Dios y no hay otro como Él Él ha escudriñado los caminos de la sabiduría y se la dio a su hijo Jacob a Israel su predilecto después de esto ella apareció en el mundo y convivió con los hombres la sabiduría es el libro de los mandatos de Dios la ley de validez eterna los que la guardan vivirán los que la abandonan morirán vuélvete a ella Jacob y abrázala camina hacia la claridad de su luz no entregues a otros tu gloria ni tu dignidad a un pueblo extranjero bienaventurados nosotros Israel porque lo que le agrada al Señor nos ha sido revelado palabra de Dios te alabamos Señor of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord
Please stand. Oremos. Dios nuestro, que haces crecer continuamente a tu iglesia con hijos llamados de todos los pueblos, dignate proteger siempre con tu gracia a quienes has hecho renacer en el bautismo. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it with conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm 
alma tiene sed de Dios, del Dios vivo. Cuando entraré a ver el rostro de Dios, como busca la sierva corrientes de agua, así mi alma te busca a ti, Dios mío. Como marchaba la cabeza del grupo, Hacia la casa de Dios, cantos de júbilo, alabanza en el mundo de la fiesta, busca las dientes de mi alma. tu luz, tu verdad, me guía y me hasta tanto, hasta como busca la sierva corrientes de agua, así mi alma te busca a ti. Dios mío, que yo me acerque al altar de Dios, al Dios de mi vida, que den gracias al son de la cítara, Dios, Dios mío. Como busca la sierva corrientes de agua, así mi alma te busca a ti, Dios mío. Please stand. God who that what was cast had become all things ever and glory to God glory to God glory to God in the highest Holy Spirit. 
glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who made night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed and mind through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the of the Holy Leitura da Carta do Apóstolo São Paulo aos Romanos Irmãos, todos nós somos em Cristo na sua Tal como Cristo foi ressuscitado de entre os mortos pela glória do Pai. Também nós caminhamos numa vida nova. De fato, se estamos por uma morte idêntica à sua, também o estaremos pela sua ressurreição. E isto o que devemos saber o homem velho que havia em nós foi crucificado com ele, para que fosse destruído o corpo que pertence ao pecado. E assim não somos mais escravos do pecado. É que quem está morto está justificado do pecado. Mas... Se morremos com Cristo, acreditamos que também com Ele vivemos. Sabemos que em Cristo, ressuscitado entre os mortos, já não morrerá. A morte não tem mais domínio sobre Ele. Pois, na morte que teve, morreu para o pecado de uma vez, para sempre e na vida que tem vive para Deus assim vós também pela o pecado mas vivos para Deus em Cristo Jesus. palavra do Senhor Obrigado, Senhor Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. 
Which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At daybreak, on the first day of the week, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They say to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be on the third day and they remembered these words then they returned from the tomb and announced all these things to the eleven and to all the others the women were Mary Magdalene Joanna and Mary the mother of James the other who accompanied them also told this to the apostles but their story seemed like nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, bent down, and saw the burial cloths alone. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, had an experience that changed their lives forever. They were not the same persons after that experience on that Sunday, the first day of the week. They came looking for the body to put the spices that they had prepared, but they did not find him. He had been raised. The tomb was empty, and two men in dazzling garments told them that God, Jesus had been raised. Why do you look for him among the dead, the one who is alive? He is not here, but he has been raised, they say. Remember what he said to you while he that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified on the third day. And then they remembered that those had been Jesus' words to them. 
Jesus had told them that all of this was going to happen. And what did they do when they returned from the tomb? They went and told these to the eleven and all the others. These women who had that incredible experience at the tomb, they remembered the words, they believed in the words, and then they went out and shared the story. They told what had happened to the eleven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Imagine if these women, instead of sharing this story, will and prepare dinner and forget about this story. Imagine that. Imagine if they did not have the courage to share what they had experienced. We will not the story and the gospel and the good news of the resurrection because it takes someone with courage to go out and share the good news. For more than 1,600 years, our church has been professing our faith with the same words. 1,680 some years that we have been using these words. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. Hundred years, we have been professing our faith with those words. Do you believe in those words? Do you have the same reaction as the women at the tomb had when you profess your faith? Do you, at the end of Mass, go out to the world and share the good news with everyone? Has your life changed forever because of the faith that you profess? Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia. The women in the gospel became missionary disciples. We are called to be the same kind of disciples. We are called to be missionary disciples as well. Proclaiming the good news in the way we treat one another, in the way we protect the most vulnerable, in the way we love and forgive one another. At Lent in 2020, I challenged all of you to experience Lent in a way that you had never experienced it before, so it will transform you for the encounter with the resurrected Christ. At the Easter Vigil last year, 2021, I challenged you to become missionary disciples missionary disciples that go out to the world and share the good news. Missionary disciples to pray, to serve, and to have charity. Disciples that spend time 
praying, serving, and giving. And we talk about take two hours a week to pray, two hours to serve, and two hours to give. At the beginning of this Lent, at the beginning of Lent this year, I challenge you to reflect on your baptism and confirmation and discover the gifts that the Holy Spirit had given you. And for that, I provided all of you with the roadmap to read the, letter, the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, to help you discover the gifts that the Holy Spirit gave you at baptism and confirmation. I also say that this year, the challenge was two-part. That was part one. Now that you have spent more than six weeks meditating, reflecting, and discovering the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given you, now it's time. Now is the time for you to put those gifts to the building of the kingdom to work for the kingdom of God. The time has come to become active disciples, to express our faith every day in our actions, to look for opportunities to educate our faith and grow in the knowledge and love of God, to listen to Him through our prayers, to see the face of Jesus in the most vulnerable, in the least of his brothers, the poor, the marginalized. The time to profess our faith, not by memory, but with our heart. The time has come to let the Holy Spirit transform you as he transformed the disciples in Pentecost. Christ is risen, alleluia. Christ is risen, alleluia. Maria Magdalena, Juana y María, la madre de Santiago, tuvieron una experiencia que les cambió la vida para siempre. Después de haber llegado a la tumba a buscar a Jesús, el cadáver de Jesús, para embalsamarlo, para ponerle lo que llevaban, se llevan la sorpresa que Jesús ya no está ahí con, en, en el sepulcro. Y cuando estaban así preguntándose qué había pasado, se les aparecen dos hombres con eh, vestiduras deslumbrantes y les dijeron, ¿Por qué buscan entre los muertos al que está vivo? No está aquí, ha resucitado. Recuerden que cuando él estaba en Galilea les dijo, es necesario que el Hijo del Hombre sea entregado en manos de los pecadores y sea crucificado y al tercer día resucite. Ah, entonces... Ellas recordaron esas palabras y se recordaron cuando Jesús se las dijo. Entonces, después de regresar de la tumba, fueron donde los discípulos, donde los apóstoles, y les dijeron lo que había, lo que había pasado, cómo habían encontrado el sepulcro. Cristo ha resucitado. Aleluya. Cristo ha resucitado, aleluya. aleluya. Cristo ha resucitado, aleluya. aleluya. Imagínense ustedes qué hubiera pasado si estas mujeres no van a contarle a nadie lo que habían experimentado. Si en lugar de irles a decir, se hubieran ido a casa a preparar la cena, a limpiar y a hacer los quehaceres domésticos. Si ellas no hubieran compartido esta noticia, no tuviéramos hoy la alegría del Evangelio. No tuviéramos hoy 
la alegría de la resurrección. Durante más de 1600 años, la iglesia ha profesado la fe con las mismas palabras. Una parte de nuestra profesión dice que por nosotros los hombres y por nuestra salvación bajó del cielo y por obra del Espíritu Santo se encarnó de María la Virgen y se hizo hombre y por nuestra en tiempos de Poncio Pilato padeció y fue sepultado y resucitó al tercer día según las escrituras y subió al cielo y está sentado a la derecha del Padre de nuevo vendrá con gloria para juzgar a vivos y muertos y su reino no tendrá fin. ¿Realmente creemos esto? ¿Realmente tenemos la misma reacción que esas mujeres? Y vamos después de misa al mundo a compartir esas buenas noticias. ¿Realmente hacemos? ¿Ha cambiado mi vida? que ya no puedo seguir siendo el mismo, he tenido yo esa reacción como esas mujeres en la tumba. Cristo ha resucitado, aleluya. ¡Aleluya! Cristo ha resucitado, aleluya. ¡Aleluya! Cristo ha resucitado, aleluya. Las mujeres en el Evangelio se convirtieron en, en discípulos, discípulos misioneros. Nosotros también estamos llamados a convertirnos en discípulos misioneros del Señor, proclamando la buena nueva, proclamando el Evangelio en la manera como tratamos a los demás, en la forma más vulnerables, en la forma en que nos amamos y nos perdonamos unos a otros. En la cuaresma del año 2020, les hice un desafío que trataran de experimentar la cuaresma de una manera como nunca ustedes la habían experimentado. Pudiéramos encontrarnos con Cristo resucitado, el día de la resurrección. En la vigilia del año pasado, de convertirnos en discípulos misioneros, discípulos que toman tiempo para orar, para servir y para dar. Y les ofrecí como modelo tomar dos horas a la semana para orar, dos horas para servir y dos horas para dar. Radio Católica, Radio Católica, Unidos por Cristo y María, Unidos por Cristo y María.